Well, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining our webinar today where we're going to discuss uh, some of the new applications that are made possible with high resolution measurement solutions. My name is Kathy McBeth. I'm the marketing manager here at Radiant, and I have the pleasure of introducing today's speaker, uh, Doug Crazer, who is Radiant's chief solutions officer. Um, Doug heads up Radiant's engineering, product development, uh, and operations teams, as well as marketing. So he's been an integral part of the development of Radiant's uh, technologies and solutions since joining the company back in 2000. So I think you'll find he's a wealth of information. He has a BS from Vanderbilt U University and an MS from the University of Michigan. Uh, you may have already uh, seen Doug speak at one of the many industry symposia that he has participated in. So before I hand things over to Doug, um, I'm going to take care of just a couple of housekeeping items. We will be um, finishing the session with a question and answer period. However, you can submit a question at any time during the broadcast. And to do so, uh, all you need to do is type your question into the questions pane that is in the GoToWebinar control panel. And you'll usually find that on the right-hand side of your, your screen. And uh, press send. And then, as I mentioned, we'll queue those up and answer them at the end of the presentation. I also wanted to mention that we will be recording this so uh, you will have access to a recorded version as well as the slides after uh, the presentation. So without further delay, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Doug. Okay, thank you very much, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. I'm Doug Krasar, as Kathy said, and it's my pleasure to um, give this web webinar this morning. Today's agenda um, will include four major topics. First, I'll talk about display trends uh, that drive new high-resolution testing requirements. I'll talk a little bit about automated visual inspection and how Radiant does that. And then I'll hit on four uh, solutions that Radiant comes up with for high-resolution measurement, including uh, detailed detection of pixel-level defects, uh, MURA detection in high-resolution displays, um, pixel luminance measurement, including OLED uh, correction, and then visual surface inspection. Finally, as Kathy said, we'll have time for Q&A. Okay. So there are several trends that are driving a requirement for higher resolution inspection of displays and higher resolution testing. The first requirement is increasing display size. TVs are increasing and getting larger than 70 inches. Uh, smartphones are getting larger as well. The higher resolution of each display uh, drives more uh, need for higher resolution testing. We're going to 8K and, and, uh, on, on TVs and we're also going to much higher resolution on cell phones as well as laptops um, and other personal computing devices. Also, we're getting high, um, very high color gamuts and larger color gamuts with quantum dot and OLEDs, and we're seeing um, a large explosion of micro displays for augmented reality or virtual reality. Um, and these are very near to eye devices where any type of small defect is, is a problem. So doing high resolution uh, testing is extremely important for, for checking for small defects, defects that the the user can see and that would uh, we want to keep the the highest quality experience for the end user okay thank you good so let me talk a little bit about automated visual inspection and how radiant does that the purpose of automated visual inspection is to replace human visual inspection and at Radiant, our automated visual inspection system consists of an imaging colorimeter and sophisticated software. The imaging colorimeter is a 2D measurement device. It's a scientific grade CCD um, with, that's cooled and very high performance that's designed to measure brightness and color scientifically. That's connected to software and together the two devices formulate kind of the eyes and the brains uh, uh, that replace the human visual inspector. 
One key is that new defect and MURA types are continually being created because there are continually being created new types of displays, higher resolution, new technologies, different form factors, all of these uh, new types of display technologies, new films, things like that, create new types of MURA. So it's very easy for a human to see a new type of, of, of MURA and learn how to inspect it. And in order to replace a human visual inspector, our algorithms have to be that fast in terms of learning how to adapt to a new type of MURA and finding it. And one really important thing about this high resolution imaging colorimeters is the more pixels I have, the more resolution I have, the more types of defects that I can find. Uh, and the better my algorithms can be to find all the new type of defects. Okay, so let me now start talking about um, some of the applications that the high resolution measurements can enable. And the first one I'll talk about is pixel line and particle defects. So as displays are going to higher and higher resolution, the, it's becoming impossible for a human to look for very small defects like particle defects or um, uh, pixel defects or even line defects at that fine of a resolution. And if you need one, two, or three human inspectors to, to inspect a 70-inch TV or even to inspect um, uh, a high-resolution laptop monitor, uh, they're not going to always catch the defects and they're going to become fatigued very quickly. However, one huge advantage of the camera system is it doesn't become fatigued. It doesn't, it doesn't get tired by the end of the day. Um, it's, and it, it always finds the defects that it's set up to find the defects. And it can do it more quickly because it can do it in one measurement versus having to roam around the TV and watch the, and look at the entire TV. Wow. So other alternatives are available when you have high resolution imaging systems to measure displays. For example, I said you can, you can take one measurement of a high-resolution display and detect every pixel defect with a high-resolution camera, 29 megapixel uh, CCD imaging system. However, let's say, for example, you're looking at displays and you want to measure displays that are not very high uh, resolution. You can then gain, gain um, tack time and you can also gain um, uh, cost advantages by testing what we say is multi-channel. So you can test two by two displays at once, maybe four displays at once. Therefore, one test measurement system can test four displays at once, increasing tack time and as well reducing cost. So it's another advantage of high resolution measurement systems. Here's an example of the output of our true test software, what I call the brains of our software. We take a measurement, the measurement then looks for uh, very small blemishes and very small defects. Of course, is it, is it going to be very small areas where the contrast is, is slightly lower? And the user can set up what contrast really is a defect. In other words, what is the noticeable difference that a user will complain about? We set that up, and then the software is able to say, yes, this is a defect that the human would call a quality problem. And then the, the system finds it. Okay, let me talk about another type of measurement that the high resolution systems enable, and that is uh, different types of MURA measurements. So, as I spoke about earlier, MURA comes in many forms and it's always being created by new types of displays and new technologies that are being implemented in displays. Um, everyone knows, I think, that MUR is a Japanese word for blemish, so we're looking for different types of blemishes in the display. But different types of MUR include line MUR, spot MUR, polarizer deformation MUR, corner light MUR, edge light MUR. You name it, they've got, they've got a term for different types of MUR. So when you have a large, high-resolution display, again, if I'm going to do human visual inspection of it, 
it's not easy for humans to find the subtle low contrast defects on a very repeatable fashion or even so they're not able to quantify it and say this is the level of myrrh that I see here. However, the true test system is able to repeatedly tell you exactly the level of myrrh. What is the contrast that you're seeing? What is the brightness differential? How many just noticeable different units can I, uh, can, are, are we, uh, you know, is, is the system detecting? And it's able to do it repeatedly every single time so that you get highly correlated data to what you're trying to find. Okay. So using these high resolution measurement systems to do MURA detection, you can find more MURA types. And the great thing about finding more MURA types is that you can say, well, here's the types of MURA that I'm finding. And you can start Pareto-ing a manufacturing system to show these are the types of MURA that are most commonly occurring. And you can make changes to the manufacturing system to improve your quality. If you're constantly seeing corner light MURA, you can make a change to the manufacturing system to reduce the corner light MURA. Another interesting usage of the um, automated visual inspection with high resolution systems is that you can grade and bin displays. I'll talk more about that. But then you can, and you can also improve yield with repair decisions. In other words, you can say, this is the display. I know what type of MURA, I know where the MURA is. This is something I could potentially repair rather than throwing out the entire, entire display. So here's an example of a Pareto of process improvements. You have multiple different types of defects. AVI can detect the flaws and it can tell you, hey, here are the trends that I'm seeing. Here is, here is the mirror that you must focus on if you want to improve your yield in your system and if you want to improve quality. And it can do that consistently and repeatedly, which is something that humans have a difficult time doing. So I talked about grading. And here, this is where you take the system and you set different levels of quality. For example, you might say, hey, I want to say if I have so many pixel defects, this is a grade B. If I have, so, if I have zero pixel defects, it's a grade A. You can imagine that if I have different levels of quality of displays, I could potentially use them for different applications. For a very high-end system, I might need a grade A display. But for a very inexpensive system where I want to reduce the cost of my system and quality is not the top concern, the display quality is not the top concern, maybe I use a level C display. And of course, if I grade into A, B, C, and F, some displays I can't ever ship, and those are F level displays or failure displays. But if you use grading, you can improve yield by saying, I'm not going to reject all of my displays. Some of my displays I'm going to use for lower level applications and higher level applications. But I can also put in logic into the grading algorithm to say, hey, these types of defects I can repair. And so it's much cheaper if I, instead of scrapping the part, I can put this back into a repair line and I can do what it takes to, to uh, fix that display, make it into an A-level display without having to scrap it. And really you can grade based on any type of quality metric that the camera can measure. Luminance, contrast, pixel defects, line defects, uniformity, MURA, you name it, you can grade on it as long as the grading algorithm and logic exists in the software. Again, I talked about repair decisions, but that's an, another way of increasing yield so that you can take a system that instead of scrapping it, you can say, hey, this is something that I can, I, I can fix on a much cheaper basis and get it to a grade A and get it into the field. Okay, so I talked about uh, pixel level defects and MURA defects. Now let me talk about pixel luminance measurements and OLED correction that is enabled by high resolution imaging systems. So when we're talking about near to eye systems, augmented reality, virtual reality, or we're talking about very high quality displays, a pixel, a pixel defect, whether or not it's a non-uniform pixel or a, de a dead pixel or a stuck-on pixel, can really detract from the user experience. But the interesting thing is they may be correctable. So it may be 
that instead of throwing out the panel and causing the yield and, and, and causing yield issues, we could correct it. So when we talk about OLEDs, OLED displays don't work the same as L LCD displays. OLED displays, each sub-pixel is an independent light emitter which behaves differently from its neighbor. LCDs, of course, have backlights and films, uh, and of course it's got the liquid crystals, that aren't individual pixel non-uniformity issues. They don't, they don't have LCD, uh, they don't have non-uniformity pixel issues on an LCD. But, um, but OLEDs do, and the interesting thing is we can, if we can measure the pixel level of the OLED, we can then correct it. We can correct it so that each individual emitter could be uniform across the display. And Radiant has a lot of experience in doing this because 10 years ago, a little more than 10 years ago, we were doing this for large outside LED displays, the kinds that you see in football stadiums and baseball stadiums. And of course, those are individual emitters. And that technology that we've used to correct LED displays, individual emitters, is actually directly translatable to OLED displays. So, as I said, if you want to remove OLED pixel non-uniformities, you have to measure at the pixel level. To measure the display at the pixel level, you need a lot of CCD, the measurement systems, the 2D measurement system pixels. So you've got, cam you've got display pixels, you've got camera pixels. Camera pixels are the measurement pixels. Typically, you need about 10 by 10 camera pixels to measure one display pixel. Well, you can imagine for an HD display, which is, you know, basically 2 megapixels, let's say 19, 1980 by 1024, but let's call it 2000 by, by 1000. If I had to measure 10 by 10 CCD pixels, I'd need a, I would need a 200 megapixel camera, but I don't have that. So in order to get around that with my 29 megapixel camera, what I can do is I can set up the display to measure um, every other pixel or every third pixel or every fourth pixel, depending on how much resolution I need. And this enables me to pace through a measurement system and measure each individual pixel on an automated fashion. And it's very interesting. This, 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 the, when we first started doing this, this measurement technique, it would take us maybe an hour to measure a high-resolution OLED panel, and now we've got it down to minutes. So it's becoming reasonable to do this in a production system for a high-value OLED display. So what is the solution? You take the 2D measurement system, like I talked about, coupled with the Radiant software that controls the display itself. It can control the display in order to measure each individual pixel and uh, put up the required patterns to measure the pixel. Then we can upload a correction into flash memory or some other type of memory file so that the RGB values that are input to that display on a pixel level basis are corrected so that each individual pixel looks uniform to its neighbor. And you can get rid of MURA or pixel level defects in that matter. Many times it's not even necessary to do the correction that I just talked about so long as I can get pixel level luminance measurements. So if I can use the technology that I just talked about where I can get luminance and or color measurements on an individual pixel basis, I can in some instances take the display and correct the pixel. So if I can measure and say this is exactly the location of the display pixel that has, that has the problem, there are technologies that can correct and fix the, the pixel on a mechanical basis rather than on a, uh, a, a signal level basis like I was talking about previously. And all of this is only enabled and practical with a very high resolution measurement system. Otherwise, I would either need many multiple cameras or I would just have to take so many measurements uh, that it would be, from a, from a tack time, it would become completely impractical. Okay, finally, the last solution that I want to talk about is visual surface inspection. That is enabled by high-resolution imaging. So 
beyond lighted displays. Here I've talked about looking at display, looking at pixels, looking at a display that's, 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 that's illuminated, that's lit up, that's showing information. But if I'm looking at, let's say, a tablet or a notebook, there are a whole lot of surfaces uh, that are not lit up, that are, uh, of course, bezels, etc., that have to, be, uh, have to have a very nice appearance. And if I want to look at, let's say, the backside of a tablet, I can do all sorts of testing with high-resolution imaging colorimeters on the backside of the tablet. Now, I, have, of course, have to add appropriate lighting because those don't light up. But here I can look at things like, is the color uniformity? Is the color uniform? How about the surface finish? If I have a texture on the backside of the, of the, of the uh, tablet or on the surface of the laptop, is that finish uniform or, does it, or is it non-uniform? I can do this with lighting and by looking at the display because, again, what my system is trying to do is duplicate what a human visual inspector would be looking for. And if the human sees that I've got a scratch, a ding, or a dent, or some sort of defect in the surface, my imaging system can detect that as well. Other examples include connectors, uh, logos. Is, uh, you know, is my logo correct? Does my logo have a scratch in it? Um, I want to know it is in fit and finish of components. Let's say, for example, the, the camera of a cell phone or of a laptop. You, you need to know, is the camera positioned correctly inside of the hole in the bezel? And if it's not, that's a quality error. But of course, with, with, with very high resolution systems, you can check and say, yes, the concentricity of the camera system is correct inside of the hole in the bezel. You know, you could do all sorts of other things with enough resolution. You can look at um, you can look at labels. Is the label correct? Is the writing correct? Does it say made in USA or made in China? Is that, is that correct? How about a keypad? Is, is the labeling on the keypad correct? You can do all sorts of detection if you have enough resolution to do it. Okay. So this are examples of scratches and dings and defects that we found with the appropriate lighting and with high resolution measurements of surfaces. And we have been able to implement this and prevent quality defects from getting into users' hands by using this high-resolution imaging technology. So, to summarize, we've shown high-resolution measurement techniques that enable detailed detection of pixel, line, and particle defects, detection of many different types of MURAs, and including the grading of, of those MURA defects, which has a lot of um, useful applications. Pixel level luminance measurements and OLED screen correction which could be used to increase OLED yield. And visual surface inspection which really helps make sure that a bad quality system does not get into the user's hand, prevents quality defects from getting in the field. So all of these systems really have the potential to increase the quality of, of a production line and also the yield of a production line. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening. I hope that uh, this has been informative. And if you have questions regarding this topic, uh, please send them in now, as Kathy said. Or, of course, you can email us or contact us, and uh, we can get a hold of you. Great. Well, thank you, Doug. Um, as Doug mentioned, we are going to open it up for questions now. And as I mentioned, uh, if you want to submit a question, uh, just go ahead and use the panel that you can probably find on the right-hand side of your screen. And uh, we'll uh, answer those as we uh, receive them. Um, I, I see one uh, question that um, I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, yes, this will be available as a recorded uh, version. We will be sending out an email link to the recorded version along with slides after the fact. Uh, but I'm going to let Doug take on some of the more technical questions here for you. Okay. There I go. Okay. So um, this is, okay, a lot of very good questions. Here we have a question, does the camera measure flickering? That's a very good question. The camera does not measure flickering. That is a time-dependent measurement. 
But one of the great things that recently happened is that in um, in August uh, of this year, we were we became part of the Konica Minolta family. So Radiant has a lot of new uh, technology available to it to measure flickering. So if you want to measure flicker, we would use a different device, um, and we would we would work with um, a flicker measurement device that Konica Minolta has available. Okay. Uh, another question, how do you perform the focusing for the measuring? That is a great question. Um, on the positive side, these camera systems actually have the ability to control the lens so that the lens itself can be controlled by the software to find the best focus. Sometimes it's possible if you want to move the display or the camera to get, let's say, a different angle of measurement, you might take it out of its best focus so the camera can automatically change its focus and control the lens to change the different focus. And it's been calibrated to achieve all of those, to, to get accurate measurements at all those different focus levels. Okay. okay. And um, let's see. So um, another question, I see spatial measurement is listed. Um, is that using the TrueTest software? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. We can measure MTF or other um, spatial quantities. And can it, can it check a 2D, a 2D drawing? Yes, it most certainly can. Um, it does not have to just check a display. Obviously, checking a display spatial resolution is, is, is one of the primary purposes. But it can check uh, any type of uh, 2D measurement system. So that's, that's a very good question. Okay. Another question. When you mention about the pixel luminance measurement of an OLED, I wonder if the software can set a tolerance for brightness and color uniformity. Uh, for example, every OLED has some difference. Thus, uh, the 5% difference is allowed between that. Is the tolerance possible in the software? Absolutely. That is a fabulous question. And uh, it goes back to... Um, our experience 10, 12 years ago of starting this for testing LED screen measurements. Just like with uh, an OLED display, the LEDs, of course, had tolerances. And uh, there were some LEDs that you simply couldn't correct to perfectly with its neighbor. And you didn't need to uh, because it, it, the display still looked quite good if you left a tolerance level in. So actually, that's a great question. You can do that in the software. And, and, and to tell the truth, it's very desirable to do that in the software. OK. Uh, another question was bubbles. Hey, you didn't mention bubbles. Um, uh, and are those included in particles? And the answer is yes. To tell the truth, it depends on what the bubble looks like. We have, we've got things, we've, caught, we've, we've measured something like donut murrah. And donut mura would be something potentially like a bubble where you'd have contrast on the edges and then a bright spot in the in the center. Um, so we wouldn't always call that particle defects. It would depend. It would depend on what the bubble would look like. If it's a very small bubble, for example, if it's a small bubble in glass and it just looked like a a, a, a contrast, a very small contrast level. Yes, we'd probably call that a particle defect. Exactly. Are there, uh, are there, is there any correction, uh, correlation with temperature uh, for mura and luminance? Okay, great question. The camera, I'm going to answer that in two ways. First of all, is it the temperature of the display? And second of all, is it the temperature of the measurement system? The measurement system is, is uh, temperature controlled. So uh, that's temperature stabilized. That's a very important part of our measurement uh, system. And we want the temperature uh, stabilized so that there is no dependence of ambient temperature or room temperature on it. As far as correlation uh, with the display, I, you know, I'm not a display manufacturer, but uh, I, I, I'm sh I'd be willing to bet that, that there most definitely is a correlation uh, with temperature and, uh, and for mirror dependence and luminance on the display. Another question, uh, do we have interchangeable lenses? Absolutely. We have a wide variety of lenses so that you can look at uh, very narrow fields of view. Let's say if you're looking at something like a wearable that's a small display, or uh, if you need a wide field of view for looking at a 70-inch display. Now, every time you think about changing lenses, you should think about view angle effects of the display. 
and how far away you want to measure the display. Um, and again, you, that's just a matter of what the purpose of your testing is. Typically, it's nice to measure it about the same distance that you expect the, the viewer to be because that's, that's where the viewer is going to see, going to see the mirror. Great question. Uh, is there any color shift versus viewing angle application? That's a great question. Yes, there is. And again, it's dependent on the display. So the first thing you have to think about is, what do I want to measure? Do I want to measure the display as though I'm measuring it from infinitely far away? Or do I want to measure the display as though I'm at the user distance? Or do I want to minimize factory space and try and measure it as close as possible? And that's dangerous because now you're going to get more and more view angle effects. The software can correct for the view angle effects if the display is consistent. If the display is not consistent, then the software, then of course nothing can correct for anything that's not consistent. The camera itself is corrected for camera color shift versus uh, viewing angle. Great question. What is the smallest spot size you can obtain? Okay, great question. Um, we can put a 20x microscope on our camera and measure something like, uh, let's see, 5 microns divided by 20. That would be one pixel. So it's obviously very, very small. But, uh, but we, we, you know, we, we can get down to the submicron level if we put a microscope on. Now, of course, you pay a price for that, and that is you can only measure a very, very small viewing angle. But it's, it's not impossible for us to measure with a macro lens one-to-one. -one. Then we're talking about measuring a resolution of about uh, five microns. Uh, but again, we can go microscopes and measure smaller than that. Um, for focusing, do we need to use a specific pattern? <sighs> that is a very good question. In principle, it is nice to set up a very sharp contrast edge to get good focus. However, it's very common for there to exist an edge already. For example, the edge of the display could be a very good contrast and that you want to maximize. So in general, you probably do have a sharp enough edge that you don't need to set up a specific pattern, but we can use specific patterns to get a sharp edge to, con to, to focus on. Does the system output spectra or just the color coordinates? This system only outputs color coordinates. It is not a spectral meter. Very good question. We use typically three or four filters to mirror the tristimulus um, uh, functions, the, the tristimulus color matching functions. So it's a colorimeter. It is not a spectral meter. Okay. So um, another question, in true test, can you deal with the brightness non-uniformity from the angle of the OLED? Can you have some calibration with the camera? Absolutely. We've had for many years, we've had a view angle correction. And this started because we measured a lot of rear projection TVs um, where, of course, the view angle dependence of a rear projector TV was huge. And we had to correct for that if we wanted to measure very, very close to the rear projection TV. And we, and we did this to minimize the factory floor space. So yes, yes, you can have that correction. Again, that requires the display to be consistent because if it varies from, if the view angle characteristics of the display vary every single display, you can't correct it. Then uh, I hope that would make sense. Can you measure automotive interior lamps? Yes, you can. And now, that's a great question. Can you measure automotive interior lamps? We can measure all sorts of automotive interior devices when we have the high resolution systems that I talked about in this presentation, they're very good for measuring the buttons and the um, console and let's say the surrounding um, uh, you know, key, little keys because then you can get the very high resolution of the instrument panel uh, keys and so on. So yes, it's very useful for that. Okay, one more? One more. Okay, uh, one more. How does the visual inspection work on shiny surfaces? Whew. Yes, that is a good question, isn't it? Well, what you'd have to do there, let's say you're looking for scratches. You do what's called dark field illumination. Dark field illumination means that you illuminate from a very high angle, from a very oblique angle off to the side, and a scratch will then deflect light into the camera. So rather than having the lighting by the camera so that off the shiny surface you would get saturation because the lights would be so bright. You do lighting from the side 
and you let the scratch or the blemish itself deflect light into the camera. Okay, great questions. Okay, well, great. That uh, takes us a little bit over our half an hour, but uh, we had some great questions there. I'm glad we could get to most of them. If you uh, have a question that was not um, that you need answered, please feel free to e email us. You can always use the info at radiantvs.com email, and we'll make sure to get that to Doug or to somebody who can, can answer your question. So thanks again for joining us today. Thank you.